This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live from beautiful Broadway Avenue in Beachview in Pittsburgh, PA, right across from, that's right, the taco stand, Las Palmas. In the, <laughs> it's a grocery <laughs> store, okay. Well, I'm excited about it because this is our maiden voyage for the awesome cast here in uh, our new Sorgatron Media Studios. We haven't let up a little bit. There's sun like on my nose, I noticed right here. Like This is our first time doing it this time of day with a window where it came from a basement that was Mayhem <laughs> Studios to a window. People are passing at us, giving us funny looks because they're like, what are people doing here? Nobody does anything in this neighborhood. And here we are. And uh, with me, joining me for the first on the couch that we carried up the hill yesterday. Oh, <laughs> you can see pictures over it on the Sorgatron <laughs> Media Facebook page. First, John Chachilla joining us from Studio A. How's it going? It's good to be here. Very, very nice, nice digs. There's a lot of space. It, it, we, it's like we've kind of opposite it a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. We went from like like kind of a little bit cramped to we have all this space, and there's a giant echo in here that I'm pretty sure doesn't get picked up on on the on the mics or anything like that. But uh, also with us uh, from the Post Gazette is your uncle Crappy Mike Pound, <laughs> beer expert. He's he talked me into actually drinking beer on a show night. Wait, oh, here's the other I've problem. Done, I've done no, this no. Here's the other problem I have. Hmm. I look over where the camera used to be this way. Oh. In a, in a, in a, in a, in, I was doing this last night on the on the Raw Wrap Up <laughs> for Mayhem Show. There's a camera right here, a giant camera right here. But I'm looking over here, like Chilla's direction, because like spatially, that's, that's where the camera been. used to be for how many months. So this is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, but no, yeah, what did, what did you talk me into, into drinking here? Uh, I didn't. I, I should note that I didn't have to, to try very hard to convince you to drink. I needed it. it. Uh, <laughs> a, a Bell's Oberon <laughs> that I brought here. Um, there you there go. You can take there a look. There, 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 there it is. Go. There it is on the... Perfect on the... sunshine. Actually, I, oh, I brought beer. I probably should have brought you some sunscreen. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. That's a, that's the new thing we need for this studio. <laughs> the only podcast studio that needs sunscreen. It's not an attic. It's not a closet. It's not a basement. I, yeah, you know, yeah. and we're we're really kind of out there and everything. So yeah, thank you guys for joining me on this episode. Uh, although I, I I was a little I, I was a little thrown off because right across the street, if you go into that grocery store, mm. apparently they're broadcasting a radio station from in there or something. Like they put a booth right when you walk in. I don't know it. Really? Yeah, it's a, a, some Spanish language thing because I'd hear him yelling there. Yeah. And then I heard it on the speaker. So they're broadcasting it in the store. And, That's really cool. And it looks like this. <laughs> so, <laughs> without the without the cameras. So I, I don't I'm just like, what what is this? And it popped up in like a week and it, it, it's it's amazing. But uh it, it, but here we are. Um um in in the studio. I, I still gotta work on my intros. I don't know how to to work that in here uh but anyways guys thanks for joining us here um online and 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 you know in person if you guys want to join us uh you just let us know on the facebook groups for the events and we'd love to have you there's in and hang out you there's can lots of room set of bleachers there's like, too. Say, we like some theater small seating. bleachers theater yes. seating we're going to like either way there we'll put a chair out for you we'll get more chairs as as demand allows and um and everything oh and if you're in the chat room we've actually set it up so the guests on the couch can see your chat so if you put anything in there it'll be uh popping up on on television up here behind me that they'll be able to see it too and i of course got the chat up over here I'm, i need to get a monitor for it still but uh we're, we're still kind of working out the configuration and everything got some new to new tools some new uh fun stuff and everything but uh anyways uh thanks for joining us uh, awesomecast.com if you want to subscribe and check out all the other stuff going on um you can uh, check us out on awesomecast on the on the twitter on the facebook live streaming every tuesday at 11 p.m eastern there goes the t-bite this is awesome uh, as we're doing this show <laughs> 
<laughs> um, it, uh, it's too late. It's too late now. I swear there was a T out there. I'll, I'll cue that a little bit better um, as we go here. But um, anyways, uh, you can uh, check us out there. Uh, uh, check out the show on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and video versions on YouTube and the Facebook page. And, um, of course, uh, if you if you can't get to the Facebook page directly, a quick quick uh, uh, connection there is live.awesomecast.net to drop into when we go live on Facebook. Um, so, and also thanks to our, our, uh, our streaming partners, rivers, edge, pgh.com. Uh, we actually, that's the music. If you could drop in here during the live stream, we just kind of put the camera on the street to watch the tea goes by and you're listening to river's edge. Uh, they've been putting us on there for a good while, as well as the four Oh five media.com who puts us on every, uh, every weekday at 9 AM Pacific time. That's noon Eastern. And and you guys can uh, drop into the show while you're having lunch at the taco stand uh, across the street or whatever that may be. Um, also, thank you to our Patreon supporters, uh, Matt, Matt Weller with the Coffee Club at patreon.com slash awesomecast, and uh, as well as uh, Michael Fedor at the fan of the show level. Um, just you guys, uh, you know, giving that support really means a lot to us. And uh, we're looking for anybody else who wants to be our boss. We really appreciate it and uh, hope that you'll contribute. Um, we'd love to have, I, I heard this on another podcast, like they, they had the goal of the Chris, they have like tens or hundreds of fans on there, but just like one new Patreon every month. And that's a good goal. So, you know, just a dollar, a dollar a month is all we ask uh, for that a little bit to help uh, keep the lights on a little. We have to keep the lights on now uh, because we are in our own facility. It does have a rent more than what we're already doing for a house. So I really appreciate any, any hand going there to kind of keep this podcasting thing rolling and getting bigger. Cause obviously we're getting a little bit bigger here and getting a uh, uh, broadcast to, to a little bit more. So let's get into our awesome thing of the week. Chilla, what do you got here? So what do I got? Uh, the, the death of uh, <laughs> Ad- Adobe flash. What? Um, so Adobe actually announced today that they are killing off flash in 2020 um they're actually trying to go out to um, apple and some some others Uh, i know a lot of training companies that use adobe flash um and they're they're actually partnering with apple facebook google microsoft and mozilla and they're planning to end of life flash in 2020 Um, i find this extremely exciting because I don't load Flash on most of my devices, but occasionally you hit that site where you need it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I actually have another machine at home that has the Flash plugin up to date, et cetera, et cetera. Like but that's your go-to that's when you're like, oh, I guess I got to do the Flash thing, right? Yeah. When you got it. <laughs> yep. When you got So I, I run over to that machine and use it for, if I really have to. Um, so I, I personally find this extremely exciting, especially when you see all the exploits and vulnerabilities that come out that are targeted at Flash. Uh, most of the, the normal people... Uh, won't have to deal with this anymore. So I, I'm interested to see where they take it. Is, are they going to come out with some kind of... I know they have some HTML5 stuff that kind of replaces Flash. I also could see this being a good thing for mobile um, because all of those Flash sites that, that still exist and won't render on mobile devices because Adobe actually even killed their their Android builds years ago. Um, wow. So there's no Flash player for, for Android. There never was for, for iOS. So this will just force more developers to go to a, a, a technology that will hopefully render well on mobile as well. And that's a that's such a big deal. As, as someone who tried to deals with mobile stuff and, and what it looks like and how it works um, mm-hmm. uh, to, to run up against that wall. And it doesn't happen nearly as often as it used to, but... Uh, uh, that this is going to be a nice thing. Well, yeah, we've already had a little bit of deprecation by by you know the browsers and, yeah, yeah. and, and mobile and everything like that. So I think I, I read this after uh, this afternoon about this, um, and, and I don't remember what the, the transition is, but it, it's like uh, now something in the range. It's only like a, a 15, 16 percent uh, of uh, web users will will hit something where they need to use flash once a day and 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 you know it, it's not that long ago then that was just, just ubiquitous you 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 yeah. could it would be really difficult to well, do without a big, it a big thing when i was in school i graduated in 2004 and mm-hmm. at, at the art institute and, and flash was i had at least two quarters concentrated on that uh, three on shockwave <laughs> 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 it kind of shows you know some, some fireworks some fireworks a little bit of fireworks a little bit of fireworks that's where you made the really sweet animated gifs 
So there's <laughs> that. Um, no, good to see that this is. I I thought it already happened. Is there even a? I didn't even think there was a flash. Like in like, there's not a new flash in a Creative Cloud. I thought even they they keep updating the client, and I think isn't it now okay built into Firefox or something like you, Firefox includes the update, and I think for a while even like think Windows, do, yeah. Microsoft Edge, the plugin was like built into Edge and was the mm. software updates were released by Microsoft, maybe not by. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I, I'm not the foremost expert on this, primarily because I don't want the plugin running on my machine. Because you've been avoiding so, it for so long. Yeah, so so I've been away from the plugin for quite some time, but I know occasionally it does require some updating. Absolutely, uh, Uncle Crappy. What is your awesome thing of the week? Uh, this is the thing I, I, I noticed uh, today um, while, while I was at work, actually. Um, and I'm I'm a fan of the app, so this was a this was kind of a cool thing. Um, uh, Drive Capital in Columbus uh, has launched a new funding round for uh, Duolingo. And if you're not familiar, that is the uh, the, the Pittsburgh company that has um, uh, built a really really cool language learning tool. Um, the this latest round will bring uh, Duolingo's uh, total value, total valuation to about seven hundred million dollars. Um, the company also said that they're uh, partly with the help of this, they're going to double the number of people they employ uh, by next year uh, from uh, roughly double. Uh, they, they employ 80 folks now, going to get up to about 150 by the end of 2018. Um, I just, it, it, it is it is such a cool app uh, and I'm, I'm, I need to be more disciplined at using it. They, they break this down into uh, into really short lessons and really, I mean, the notion is if you, you spend 10 or 15 minutes a day um, you, you can make progress and, and, and you do, um, if you, if you are not like me and you force yourself to, to do this stuff, but it's not, it's not painful. It is, uh, it is easy. It's actually entertaining. Um, and it's, it's great to see a, a, a Pittsburgh company like this, a, uh, doing what they do. It's, uh, it, it is this really well done thing. Um, and B getting the support that they're, that they're getting. That's awesome. I know I've seen them at a few of the events, the tech events around, yep. around the area. I had the chance to talk to a couple of guys. Uh, involved with that so yeah anything anytime you see anything like these guys uh building up and it's a great service mm -hmm. from everything that we were, were aware of right so um and you, you think of spanish right away um but but there are there are a ton of languages you can do and they're and they're adding more mm -hmm. uh as a, and i don't remember what the most recent one was i don't know if it was mandarin maybe um but they're they're they're, they're branching out into into all kinds of different spaces so um, if you, if you're curious about the language, whether it's, it's Spanish or French or something else, uh, it's definitely worth a look. All right. Is it, is it wrong for me to say new studio? Totally. <laughs> is it yeah, something not at all. Totally allowed. I mean, other than the fact that, you know, some things may be breaking and we're com like we're testing some new hardware and, and new software along with the new kind of resetting everything up and rediscovering what needs to be fixed before we're up to full capacity here like we were in Mayhem Studio. Um, but, you know, having a space like this, having, you know, we, we did our first recordings yesterday and then people walking by and gawking at, you know, what's going on in here. Um, I'm hoping eventually more people look up from their phone on the T. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, yeah, no. you know, things like that, right? Uh, so, and, and of course, you know, there's more things that need to be done here. Like, we need to put things on the walls. We got these stark white walls and everything like that. Mm. So, but there's 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 sound not there's sound absorption in here to help cut down on some of the echo that's happening. There's there's um, you know some other things we're going to do to kind of decorate the place. And you know how it goes. You've seen what's sure. happened to the studio after sure. a while. I mean, Mayhem Studio in January. Anywhere when we ran, we redid it. it had a nice white wall, and uh, I, I think uh, uh, Trey, Trey from from Wrestling Mayhem Show, uh, one of our contributors, um, he was talking about how uh, he's like, you know, you know, th this this is a nice canvas for for eventually during like Mayhem Mania and everything when we're gonna put like all the all the listings and everything yeah. up here, you yeah. know. So you never know what we're gonna do. So, um, but you know, as we go here, it'll be it'll be cool to see, you know what this becomes and what we can put in here and, and the interest in having a place that, you know, we've already booked up like a month and a half on wrestling mayhem show. Mm -hmm. We booked up the entire month for, of August for, for awesome cast. So, so already we're getting some energy from that. Some of the clients are going to do some things in here. Uh, community is going to do some space, some stuff in here already. And that's kind of grown this 
greater podcast idea that I've had for a while. Yeah. And, and the opportunity to do it. And, and, and big thanks to our friends um, over at Atlas uh, Development, actually, that um, kind of saw the vision. Mm-hmm. Or at least at least enough of the vision to give us a chance to to get in here and do this mm-hmm. and uh, and 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 carry a couch up the hill and <laughs> and make a spectacle of ourselves and everything uh, right here on on a main drag in a developing neighborhood. So um, I, it, really, that's it. I mean, it, it has to be because I mean, you know, we have a play space in public. Yeah, we've yeah. moved out of my basement. You know, we've after all these years, after 10, 11 years of podcasting. You know, we've we've we're going to the next level, mm-hmm. and it's really cool to see. Absolutely, absolutely. So. Um, the, the the idea that uh, that that you can haul all this stuff out and 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 plop it down in the middle of the community uh, is a really cool thing, mm-hmm. uh, and especially if that leads to kind of involvement from people you know outside your immediate circle. Uh, uh, that's that's how this stuff grows. So yeah, exactly, and that's that's the big thing is is kind of where you, I mean you look around, you, mm-hmm. a lot of the same stuff is here, mm-hmm. right? We got a couple of new cameras and things, but yeah. like these are the same computers. The that's the same couch, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and, and and we're just we uh, you know, and that was the idea. I just wanted to take my basement and put it in front of a window, mm-hmm. you know, and mm-hmm. and and that's exactly what we've done because we've we've kind of workshopped this for so long, and and we'll improve things. Like there's going to be a little more incentive to improve things and make things look a little better in here as we go. But mm-hmm. for now, you know, I, I I don't think it looks too bad for what we have here. Yeah, not at all. You know, not for for something that you walk by and say, wow, there's something going on in there. You know, we're not like the night shiny everything's new thing like a, a, a studio me over in Penn Hills mm-hmm. or not Penn Hills Penn, Penn Avenue I'm mm-hmm. sorry over and over in uh, East Liberty but you know we don't need to be and that's kind of the spirit of the podcasting thing that we're doing so Where, where's, and, where's the brick wall where's the brick wall <laughs> it's still down there we'll have to have another we can, ca- we can carry that up Hampshire and uh, I actually I have access to a truck periodically oh yeah <laughs> If you need, if you need, if you need to move it, so like I said, you there's brick wall wallpaper. So maybe that would. That, well, that's kind of what it is because it's <laughs> it's just this thin. Yeah. You know. Uh, yeah. I don't know if I'm breaking your believability in the wall in the, in the studio, but it's. it's I, I know what it really is. You don't have to lie to the public. <laughs> uh, brick wall fake news, um, but. Uh, <laughs> I just realized so 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 I fixed the ca- I, I fixed the camera and now they're like here's my here's the cable hanging out here that I'm never going to plug back in from Comcast. <laughs> so oh, is this count as cutting the cord? Is this symbolism as cutting, cut. cutting the cord Boom. over here? Done. Yeah. Done. So it's just like I don't like, like they gave me the box and it's all like uh, uh, channels that look better when I, I I attach my antenna. So we're just. Going to roll with that. Welcome to cable compression. <laughs> the cable. No, no, no. It's not even HD. Oh. They didn't even give me HD channels. They gave me the most basic package, which, like, so you're paying for less than you would get for free if I was getting that for cable. That's the man's nice. keeping you down. The man's yeah. keeping me down. Don't give me into the rest of the Comcast issues, but uh, maybe that'll be a gold for this week. So, actually, we talked about it the last few weeks on gold. We I talked about it a little bit. I want to hear how you got the cable through the weeds. <laughs> <laughs> it's not how I did. I'll tell you that much. Um, it, okay, it's a fun story. We'll, we'll, that's for the Awesome Cast Gold uh, that we'll uh, include for you guys on Patreon uh, later. It will be, remind me to record that after the show. Anyways, hey, thanks to our friends. You know, we, one thing we brought with us is 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 the the thing that's been with us for so many years. Our good friends at Slice on Broadway still a part of this, and we're a little closer to them. We're on Broadway, guys. I always say a slice on Broadway, on Broadway Avenue, where the tea still goes by. We just watch the tea go on by here. It's here. It's closer. Okay, it's not right here. It's the other end of it. But (laughs) still, it's like we're capping the two ends of the neighborhood of awesomeness over pizza and podcasting. So thank you to the, to our good friends at Slice on Broadway that have been supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza for so many years and uh, still supporting the show and, uh, and, 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 you know, and getting people in here, okay? we got we got, we got Mike me. in here. It works for me. Mm-hmm. It's a good incentive, and uh, and of course we're going to be showing off and eating pizza in front of everybody out there. <laughs> so I just I just saw that the uh, the, the slice in PNC Park is included uh, on, on a Uber Eats for my address. What? I am very excited about. Wow. This. <laughs> expansion. The slice on Broadway Pittsburgh expansion continues. Uh-huh. Uh huh. The wow. inevitable march towards domination. It's like, and I am happy to participate. I wonder if they were included on this side of town for people that are in like kind of the outer 
reaches this way. Like in I actually, the, the neighborhood Facebook group, there are, it seems like there's a discussion about who makes the best pizza uh, once every couple of weeks. <laughs> and, and somebody, but this time around, you know, it's, it's marginally helpful, but this time around someone mentioned that, that a slice on Broadway is a, uh, uh, we can, we can get it delivered to our homes in Brighton Heights, and I'm 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 very very pleased. It's amazing. Um, that actually segues perfectly into what I wanted to talk about next. Um, Brandon out there, um, he he uh, submitted a uh, Facebook kind of video story today that that got my attention. He tagged me in it, of course, because the <laughs> resident not, not that I've been in it like a month, but this the self, the the ride sharing uh, uh, guy uh, uh, on this crew. But uh, apparently, Lyft and Taco Bell are teaming up. Oh. So, oh, this video is loading very, very weird. <laughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> this is not right. Why is it so? Why is it so zoomed in? Oh, because this says M dot Facebook. Let's get rid of that bit right there. But basically, after I fix this website, um, maybe, maybe I am. Um, but, but basically, the idea is there's a taco mode. Uh, if enabled in your area. Oh, now this page doesn't work. Uh, there's a taco mode <laughs> if it's available in your area that you can you can uh, uh, pick up. It turns all the lift cars into tacos. Mm -hmm. And the sole point is to take you through the drive through at Taco Bell between the hours of 9 p.m. and 2 a.m. for your fourth meal. Uh, and this now, this is only available currently in Orange County. Okay. Of course, yes. uh, and uh, but it, it's supposed to be rolling out a little wider next year in 2018, um, and uh, it's actually going to include like they're going to have a very specific menu for the for the uh, taco mode lift oh, wow. and you know uh, people. So I don't know if that's you know limited items because of what it is or, or, special. or specials or or, or something mm. like that. But so Taco Bell doesn't change their menu later in the evening do they i don't think so no, no so, so it, it must be something special for like there must be a special menu for right lyft. like it might be a little more incentive or something right yeah huh this is super exciting to me because i've always thought like oh i want to get a lift or i want to get an uber but i want to stop somewhere and pick up fast food which people is, do that which is people do that do they'll, they'll, they'll <clears throat> boat you through the drive and i there's one lady who who got in her car with three kids and then went into Wendy's and left me with her three kids. Now that's just weird. That uh, was a little weird. No. But sometimes I'll go through the drive-through. One, one I was uh, taking out out for the night um, to, to the bars, and she was saying that her her like when she's on the way back, she you know always wants to get something you know on after after the bars, and she'll buy Wendy's for the uh, for the uh, Lyft driver. An Uber driver and whatever. I'm just like, oh, get me on the way back. <laughs> <laughs> I've stopped at I've, I've stopped at convenience stores for people, and mm -hmm. they'll, they'll grab me a Mountain Dew or something, you know. Nice. So I mean, this this already happens. They're just kind of encouraging it, uh, you know. Obviously, okay. I mean, Taco Bell's this is a sponsorship, mm -hmm. you know. Like there's mm -hmm. there's you know, uh, it's more awareness for them, right? Um, but uh, still, like I think it's 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 a pretty cool concept. I, I, I kind of like the team up. It's not Uber Eats. It takes you to the place, so. <laughs> but still, it's um. I, I think it's kind of a fun, uh, uh, thing that they can be doing here. And a nice little team up. It kind of uh, brand wise, I think it makes sense with them. So in in what Orange County, California, right? So I guess you know if anybody's going to be getting their fourth meal on, it's going to be, you know, out in California, where they there might are, have a little are, bit of an appetite. For some weird reason, she doesn't strike me as the typical Taco Bell eater. <laughs> I don't know if you saw the, her. The, like the, the, I did. Oh, I the, did. the host. No, on here? I think that's a good. That's a good point. The host over here on Rated Red. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it was the, the the it was part of the ad. It said like the fourth meal or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And has the girl in like the tight black shirt. And I'm like, is she she's just not eating that. Doesn't yet. seem yeah. like she's maybe not a lot, but uh, talk about no, no. I figured it out. You got to make the window look like a cell phone in order for it to work. Because it thinks it's mobile and it's growing it on, uh, yes. based on the size. Yes. So, yeah. Uh, anyways, <laughs> you know, Chrome has a. If you go into the developer tools, you can set the browser to report as mobile. Right. Kind of auto size it. It works well. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, it was it was dynamic, so it it just kind of was magic with the size of it. It just was based on width, so it stretched everything out and then mm -hmm. didn't change the height apparently. Uh, so. Um, so that was from Brandon. Uh, Amanda Narcissi over at Bull Pittsburgh sent us a wired article about RIP Microsoft Paint. And oh, this makes me sad. This does make you sad. This, this makes me is, sad as well. Is that did that get you guys through some some tough work assignments here and there? 
I, I still use it. <laughs> That's me too. <laughs> or okay. this morning. <laughs> I can, to explain, um, I, 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 one of the things I do at the Post Gazette is a, a, a daily, I write a daily newsletter mm-hmm. um, uh, called the PG Feed. And occasionally when um, I, I try to make these light, I try to make them, I try to have a lot of fun with them. And occasionally there is a situation where I would, it would be helpful to use like a, a, a Photoshop kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, what I found to, to great effect, there's a, there's a practical reason for this, and that is my machine at work uh, would would slow to a crawl if if I tried to do anything on actual Photoshop. Ooh. So uh, my solution is paint. And also I found, I think, that just the effect of the, the completely amateur-looking Photoshop jobs I do in paint and then send out this <laughs> newsletter to thousands <laughs> of people, I actually think it works pretty well. So I use it a lot. It's quaint, right? It is. It is. Um, so, so yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to miss that when it's gone. So we don't, it's very difficult to get anything at work other than mm. paint. Cause paint comes with windows. Cause it's there. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's there. So, um, I mean, I, at home, like I've used, what is it? Paint.net, which is like a paint on steroids, yeah. Yeah. but we can't get there from work. Um, I've used a number of tools, but yeah, paint gets me through a lot of, I just need to crop this yeah, or yeah. I'm ta- I'm hitting print screen to grab a screen capture and then I need to, to trim it out. I mean, mm-hmm. it, and that's it, right. Like a few versions ago, windows like paint got really useful. <laughs> what I mean, all, if all I need to do is draw a box around a button to show mm-hmm. someone where to press or point an arrow to something. I mean, I know certain people at work that if they need to, add like brightness and contrast filters they actually have to take the photo put it in because paint doesn't have that right <laughs> they have to put it in um powerpoint and then use the powerpoint photo tools to then adjust certain uh, okay. things so, okay so there's all these people that find all these crazy workarounds, workarounds yeah. Yeah. but it's a very simplistic tool that solves solves a, a I guess obviously very frequent issue for a lot of people. I've actually I've, I've, I've built tutorials for things that, um, that that the web team at work needs to do um, using Paint. Also, just I mean it's it really very basic stuff, but um, it is it is quick and is easy. Now, now Microsoft did announce that as part of the Windows 10 crew, fall, I think it's Fall Creators update, they'll be bringing Paint 3D to the platform. So it's not going to have all the same tools mm-hmm. as paint does today, but it'll actually have some 3d rendering tools mm-hmm. that will allow you to work in, in, a, in a third dimension. And then the other thing, um, in gadget report or in gadget reported this afternoon, I'm guessing Microsoft took the, the paints going to the grave to the, to heart because they actually, put out an announcement that said Microsoft clarified where paint is going with a follow-up post. Microsoft oh. paint is here to stay. It will have a new home soon in the windows store where it will be available for free while it oh. cowers in the corner, hoping that you install it. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Please Remember install me. me? <laughs> What'll be interesting to see is the metric on download, you know, like, mm. cause yeah. they'll, they'll put in there how many people have downloaded mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. So it'll be interesting to see how many downloads it gets because it sounds like it's not going to be part of the basic. Well, here's stuff. the other thing, though, is when as newer versions of the OS get deployed in your respective businesses, like, is it, are you going to have the ability to bring it back? Like, do you have yeah. that access to the App Store to download a free app like that? Because, I mean, they usually they kind of lock down security on yes. something like that. Well, and, yes. But I think it, with the newer versions of Windows 10 and the Enterprise, they can whitelist apps in the app store so they could oh, say okay. oh you're allowed you're only allowed to download these 10 apps from the app store. yeah so i mean what well, that isn't that how you get office as well right yeah that's going to be a future state but yeah okay because in the in the enterprise we still download or we still install office from like a a, pa- a packaged installer mm. not from like office 365 or not from the app store right but and i wonder too is this microsoft's way of saying hey enterprise you better get on board with using the the store and stuff like that because you can still work your way around it. Right. Um, but if they start doing things like this, it's going to become more apparent that you got to come up with a strategy of how you're going to adopt the store. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Makes sense. All right. Um, there was one more story here. I found this via uh, our friend Andy Quayle at Techburg. 
but apparently Comcast is uh, tapping a Pittsburgh company um, for uh, Internet of Things network platform. Uh, the company is called uh, Machine Q, which uh, says it, it, it's to offer quicker and more energy, energy efficient options for connecting the Internet of Things devices. Um, uh, have you? Did you catch wind of this here, Chilla? Yeah. I did. Honestly, I did not catch wind of this, but it sounds very interesting, and I wonder. When you think of Internet Things of a device, I think very low power. I think, I mean, some of them have zero screen. Mm -hmm. But now I know New York was doing something with Internet of Things too, because obviously a lot of people in New York don't have air conditioning, so they have window air conditioners. So they were pairing some kind of Internet Things power on off device with a thermostat that would allow the energy you could get a discount on your en with your energy company if you use this device because then the energy company could technically control right the, okay. the temperature yeah. and the, right. the window air conditioner in your house there's something like that i've heard <clears throat> that's like a like neighborhood wide thing i heard like one company might be working on um and you know where where it would control like you know you know, you know, rental properties, bunch of properties to make sure they're not, you know, going crazy with with heat or plumbing or something like that. You know, pipes freezing on properties that they that they own, basically, right? And and other things like that. And so, machine again, more into it. Machine Q um, is apparently building prototype devices that can be installed on bridges and collect information on health and safety. So mm -hmm. again, a very infrastructure um, focused thing. So um, really cool to see uh, that. And again, you know, you know Pittsburgh being in the news for that kind of expansion as well. So awesome. Uh, Chilla, tell me about what you, you have been our, our, our person to, to, to keep, keep us updated on the TiVo all these years later. Uh, what's going it's, on it's with still, you, TiVo now? I'm sorry. It's still the best device out there for, for what it does. And it can do over the air, non-compressed video. <laughs> so yeah. it's kind of, you get the best of both worlds, right? Like I can watch WTA channel four over the antenna, mm -hmm. or I can watch channel four, 504 over um, Verizon Fios. And I will go to channel four every time. If, I, if that's the channel I'm watching, because it's a perfect uncompressed high def video signal. Mm -hmm. Whereas Comcast, you, I mean, when you, I notice it, Grass during football games, mm -hmm. you kind of get that digital artifact yes, look. Yes, you do. And any of anything that's deep black with like a smoke running over it or some kind of gray tone in there, you get that very artifacty look. But that's neither here nor there. It, that's just a, another great selling point of TiVo. So, so TiVo, um, one of their new remotes came through the FCC. Um, it is a remote that has Bluetooth and ne a Netflix button built in and a microphone. Um, this is pretty cool because one of the things that TiVo actually released with a... You get your default remote and you can actually pay to get secondary upgraded remotes. So they actually have a TiVo remote that slides and has a full keyboard underneath the top shell of the, of the, of the remote. Um, this one's going to have a microphone and microphone button. So if you've seen the Comcast commercials where you can use search with, I think what it was Comcast called X1 or it's not yeah. Xfinity. Mm -hmm. It's like the Xfinity X1 yeah, the platform. X1 platform yeah. um, we've seen this with iOS or with, with Apple and the Apple TV and Siri search. The one thing I will say that, oh, don't answer me, Siri. Um, <laughs> sorry for everyone at home. Um, the one thing I will say about Comcast that they've always done well is they know how to ag aggregate the um, in the services you have. So, for instance, if I were to if I cut FiOS out of the equation, mm -hmm. TiVo knows that I have over the air antenna capability. It knows uh, if I have a Netflix subscription or not, if I have a Hulu subscription or not, if I have Amazon Prime or not. It looks at what I have access to, and will say, "Oh, you watch." Game of Thrones on HBO Go. And because you watch Game of Thrones, you might like The Flash on Tuesday nights on the CW, and you're entitled to that because it's free. So, so kind of like what the Apple TV TV app does, but a little In, more expanded. More expanded and way better. Um, because it actually takes every time you watch something, 
it'll actually put four blocks up at the top and say, because you watched or watch or are about to watch this, you might like this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. And it never advertises something that you don't get for free. Okay. Um, so that's where I really see that, that mic button coming in handy. Um, because they have all that aggregated information and they're really good at indexing all the content. Like when I search in TiVo for house hunters, I mean, I, it immediately takes me to HGTV channel and shows me the next 18 times it on, it's on. Do I want to set up a recording? Whatever. So I'm interested as long as they can do the, the voice to text piece of it. I really think this is going to be the what they're going to definitely come behind from a voice search perspective and aggregation perspective. Um, especially when you look at some of their newer TiVo devices that are already doing 4k um, and things like that. They, they're, I mean, they're putting out 7.1. They're taking like the, if one, if, if, if one of the capabilities of the TiVo, like whether it were one of the sub capabilities, like a Netflix or a Hulu, if one of them says, Hey, we're going to do 7.1 audio, or we're going to do HDR video, they make their boxes be able to accommodate the highest common denominator, not the lowest. So, so this, to me, this is just another major selling point to the platform. That's awesome. So, so I should definitely go back to the TiVo, huh? Yes. This and if good. you're, if you're interested, let me know because I have, I may have an extra <laughs> one you can take over. Uh, you never know. <clears throat> hey, hey, if, if when the new ones, the, I mean, the new ones are relatively inexpensive for what you're getting. And if you're getting the over the air, mm. um, it's a free it's there's no more charge on the there's no more subscription model you just buy the oh, device nice. and you're done nice. man if you're telling me like i could go record the stuff and i like if, if it's most of the stuff that's on cw and hulu which i either have to pay for or deal with commercials and i can just and that's record the, so it so over that's, the air that, that, that's the other thing that they added to the controller i forgot to mention so right now on the controller the d button is mm -hmm. the commercial skip Mm -hmm. So every time you're watching something on TV, as long as it's pretty mainstream, mm -hmm. I mean, there's very few shows that we watch that we don't have the option come up. But every time you go to commercial break, there's a an option that comes up and says, press D to skip. Nice. And you hit the D button and it immediately skips to when the show's coming back from commercial nice. break. I don't know if there's gnomes in there that figure out like what <laughs> when the commercials are or who's who's figuring out those time gaps. But that, that is another thing they're bringing to the remote. Right now, it's just the D button, and there'll be an official commercial skip button added. The other thing that you could do is if you had a TiVo at your house, and you put a mini in here, because they log in through the TiVo service login, you could actually pull all the content off your DVR back to here and or, have it everywhere or, you go on your mobile or device. vice versa. Cause I'm on top of a hill here and I can get things like TAE. That's a problem right. at home. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, so I would have the broader aspect yeah. and it's better quality cause it's over the air. You might be selling me on something here. <laughs> so <laughs> to be honest now with, with new situations as they arise, I'll be interested. So I would, I would definitely stay alert to this because if they're bringing out a new remote, I'm really wondering, mm -hmm. Are they also bringing out a new box, which usually either means extremely high discounts on the old on the boxes they're phasing out? Which so so look at last year's model when this happens. And yeah, and yeah. it's you're looking at last year's model and it's doing 4K. It's they always seem to be kind of on that more cutting edge. Mm -hmm. So last year's model is what FiOS and Comcast are going to be pushing out six months from now. So right. Right. Well, looking forward to it. Well, on the um, online TV side, uh, th and this is a little bit of a crossover with our other podcast with Wrestling Mayhem Show, so it's a little more interesting. It's kind of rumor-ish at this point. Uh, WWE is considering taking its package to Facebook. And when I say not WWE Network, they're talking about, in this case, uh, according to wrestle, wrestling-online.com, got that hyphen in there, just like the Post-Gazette. Yes. Um, <laughs> so, uh, but apparently, you know, uh, Raw and SmackDown, of course, they have on the USA Network. And there's a couple years ago where they were actually looking for a better deal. You know, I mean, it's, it's still, I think, consistently some of the highest rated stuff on cable, even mm -hmm. though um, a wrestling fan seemed to poo-poo the fact that it's like, oh, they're down to a two point point something or something still amazing for cable programming yeah. especially weekly pro cable programming that's live 
for five hours collectively on on USA Network. That's that's amazing for that. Uh, but WWE feels like they got kind of a raw deal on this. Apparently, uh, USA Network kind of uh, snowballed them on the deal a bit, and uh, and uh, they, they, they think they could get a little more money. So they're looking to Facebook at uh, potentially bringing the programming there as well. Of course, Facebook, Twitter, kind of in this kind of battle. Bringing a lot of that live programming up, right? Yes. And uh, and what's you know what better than WWE programming that has that audience with WWE now and everything and SmackDown and Raw are kind of the gateway into that world, right? It's the mm-hmm. common denominator product to to you know shell out your nine ninety nine a month for for the kind of upsell and everything else that they offer and and, and all their advertising and everything, right? Uh, so it's it just kind of another like you know um, <laughs> one quote from. From uh, uh, an analyst says that we believe WWE is being significantly underpaid in its current ra- in its current Raw and SmackDown deal. So there you go. Uh, I mean, it, it kind of makes sense with the way everything else is going. I, I, I pull up Twitter.com to go log into an account to do something for for work, and I see soccer playing. You know, yes. it, it's yes. amazing how much stuff is. Or, or Comic Con when that was going on, I was like, mm-hmm. well, I might stick around for this a little bit. Well, they, uh, Twitter Twitter did NFL games. Last fall. Oh yeah, and, yeah. And, and but I think it moved to Amazon now. Uh, I think you're right. I think you're right. But th- but that's uh, that is um, everybody's trying. Everybody's experimenting. Everybody's looking. Everybody's yep. looking. Absolutely. And even even if that's just a a uh, negotiation <laughs> ploy, it's a smart thing to at least take a look at. Just for dr- WWE. Does Directv still have Sunday Ticket? I believe. So. Uh, yes. So that'll be interesting since AT and T now owns. Direct TV, will that be like a huh. oh you have our cell you have our cell phone carrier, you get Sunday ticket for either free or at some kind of discount because mm-hmm. I'm guessing the advertising pays for most of that. There so. was I if I remember right, um I think in the past Verizon has had a contract uh to do live um, NFL games on, 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 on their devices. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um and I don't read. I don't know where that stands, but that, but that's that's an interesting point. If uh, if that's something that they can, uh, if Verizon doesn't have something that's um that's a exclusive, um, I wonder if AT and T can kind of slip that in there too. Uh, and it's interesting because I've been getting a lot of advertisements from AT and T. I don't know if you're an AT and T yeah. customer, but um, you know they, they seem to be rebranding themselves as this entertainment company. I got this email today that was it was today or yesterday. Hey. Seventy dollars a month, unlimited data plus Direct TV now. Like you, like you could get. Like it was pretty interesting what they were really trying yes. to push from a, a mobile and entertainment perspective. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. and that way they just rebranded um, um, Root Sports and a lot of other sports networks mm-hmm. to AT and T Sports. Exactly. I think I heard the Comcast guys talking about that yesterday. <laughs> actually, like, did you hear what they did with Root? It's like it's AT and T Sports. What? Yeah, like that that kind of thing. Or even you know, I, and I can't remember. I think Chile, you might have been in a discussion with this about the they were changing the interface for Direct TV now, Direct TV and, and AT and T video properties to be the same interface across the board mm-hmm. so you know again kind of like hey it's the same stuff a lot of the same content it's just we're taking all those delivery methods which is smart because mm-hmm. then you have the cellular the internet and you have a satellite dish for everybody else they can't do those things mm-hmm. 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 absolutely makes sense so you just become this big provider so and then we'll see I, you know you feel like verizon kind of should have gotten to that point already right with one, all the things one they would have thought, going yeah, on. So. you know, and it's really weird to me being both a Verizon and a Comcast customer now. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, you're on because <laughs> because I'm on a Comcast the spectrum, Comcast business, and I'm on Verizon FiOS at home, and so I play. And between that and I have AT and T for phones, I pay way too much for internet. <laughs> way, <laughs> way, way too much for internet at this point. But I have to make sure. Uh, yeah. I the bubble is is complete. Yeah. I guess, right? Um, I mean, I, I kind of joked when I was having trouble getting the Comcast there. Now I was like, "Can I just run a, a line from my house because it's enough internet, and you don't provide here?" So, eh? <laughs> you know, uh, I'm yeah. sur- I'm surprised they they provide up there, but not. I mean, yeah, it was a trouble for Comcast too. So it's just, oh, and again, I think it's um, part of the issues. We'll, we'll get into it. It's a really interesting story to, to why you can't get cable to this building on a main street in Pittsburgh. We'll get to in Awesome Cast Gold. 
All right, uh, Chilla, uh, one last thing. I want you to tell me about uh, the, the 360 video getting a boost in Facebook, and, and uh, we'll head out of here and do that awesome cast gold. So uh, <clears throat> I was surprised to see um, Facebook, when we're talking about bandwidth, and right, there's a lot of locations that don't have a, a lot of bandwidth, or you, you're you using cellular um, network. Facebook's boosting their, their 360 live video to – to or through 360 live video to 4k I'm for having, better vr i'm having <laughs> enough trouble streaming regular wow. 360 video on a gear vr right now and uh you know, on that fios connection and, and now we're going 4k yep so uh, it's interesting so so that they're gonna bump it um for the facebook 360 app on gear vr was one of the name one of the names for for who they're gonna be pushing that content to um then they also came out and listed a number of live 360 ready devices. And I was surprised to see how many devices they had listed. Um, there's a bunch of Insta 360 devices, like an Air, a Nano, and a Pro, that look pretty interesting and come in at like that $200 price point. In fact, one of those devices, the Air, is USB-C, so it plugs into the bottom of any USB-C Android device as well as any PC or Mac, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, and these these devices range anywhere from that that approximate two hundred dollar price point, which seems to be the entry level for three hundred and sixty video, all the way up to the Nokia Nokia was it Ozo, which is like I think a thirty or forty thousand mm-hmm. dollar camera rig. Um, you get one of those, Sork. <laughs> Sork has two of them. Keep it in. I haven't brought, haven't brought the Theta up here yet. So, uh, no, 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 no. And, and they're also certifying video publishing mm-hmm. um, applications. And I've never heard of any of these Scratch VR, Groovy Gecko, Live Scale, Teradek. Um, Wowza, no, not me either. Zcam Wonder Live, but but it's nice to see that they're really embracing the platform as a whole, right? They're saying, here's the here's the devices you can watch on at, at a 4K higher resolution, better experience. Here's the devices you can use to to record, and here are the applications that we we look at that you can publish with. So I I think it's a pretty cool concept, and they're they're really going all in on this. I don't see. I haven't seen any of these types of announcements from from your YouTubes and your your other platforms. I, I know Twitter has said you know they're they're supporting Live 360, but but I haven't seen any of this type of in depth. Here's here's what we recommend. Here's how you do it, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And this to me this eliminates a lot of the barrier to entry for anyone who wants to do this because two hundred dollars if you're if you're even interested in entry level $200 when it comes to that VR video doesn't seem to be a huge barrier. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Awesome. Um, well on that point, uh, so, Oh, Hey, I want to give a shout out to one thing I found and, and I don't know how they're doing. We'll uh, check in on them. So new dimension comics, who also was involved in the three rivers comic con we got to go check out a few months ago they have a thing they're trying to do called ready set geek on indiegogo um this is intending to be a geek game show that they want to produce um out of the century three mall now Where they're already up? now century three mall you know locally we know there's a mall that's like not doing great they right. have no food core left they're, they're, all the they're, all the stores are leaving you know this thing's like a pretty dead mall and they are already new dimension has expanded has started a game room mm-hmm. for for tabletop and and and, and card games and uh, they want to expand it out even more to this idea of doing a game show in century three mall as part of their expansion i guess <laughs> so really cool. um i don't know how they're going to do they got 25 dollars raised of the 2000 that they need with a month left but uh but it's a cool idea you know so uh, check it out you know at least let them know what you think of it and everything like that uh so uh indiegogo look up at new dimensions comics and uh ready set geek 
over there. And of course, we shared it on our social media on the Awesome Cast Facebook group. And, and we encourage everybody to join the Facebook group for Awesome Cast, a really cool place where a lot of people are sharing the stories and we're talking about a lot of tech things going on. And that influences what we have in the show. Uh, you know, obviously, we had a lot of uh, stories that were shared over, including the death of Microsoft Paint and yes. everything like that, and, and the Taco Bell lift thing that I would never have found on my own. Come on. <laughs> you know, and that's amazing. Uh, so please go check that out. Check out everything at awesomecast.com. Subscribe to the show. And uh, and an invite again, if you guys want to join us here in studio, you know, to view a recording of the show, we're going to put some chairs out. Let us know in the uh, in the event for the week if you want to be uh, in in the house, and uh, we'll set you up in here, and you guys can hang out with us. We got some slice on Broadway. I might have to get more slice on Broadway if we keep this going, uh, but uh, you definitely kind of open that up. We want this to be uh, kind of a podcast party here on Tuesday nights between Awesome Cast and the Wrestling Mayhem Show, and we invite you guys to join us. So. Uh, John Chichilla, he's Chilla on the Twitter, ChillaTech.net. That's where you can find me. And Uncle Crappy on the Twitter, Mike Pound. Uh, Mike Pound PG at Uncle Crappy at uh, or, or uh, post com slash beer me. That's the beer show. And you can subscribe at, uh, at the PG's home uh, webpage to the PG feed newsletter which I am now responsible for. Oh, man. Everybody's doing newsletters. Everybody with the newsletters. It is fun stuff. That's great. Uh, so go check that out. Of course, check out Sorgatron on the Twitters, on the Instagrams, and uh, SorgatronMedia.com for all the fun stuff and all the stuff that we've been producing these days. And so much more on the horizon in the works. Believe me, there's a lot in the works right now. <laughs> and I'm really looking forward to unleashing some of these projects that we're, we're uh, kind of doing the uh, pre-work on. So... Uh, so uh, we'll see you guys next time thank you to our awesome chat room you've been our awesome audience have an awesome week this show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network find out more at sorgatronmedia.com